the White Sox hired Tony La Russa, and then the PR nightmare commenced. So what is going on in Chicago? Uh, this is not how you'd ideally draw up the hiring of a new manager. Uh, so what, what's actually going on? So for those who haven't heard about it, let's go over the brief timeline. Uh, Jeff Passan about a day ago tweeted that White Sox manager Tony La Russa was arrested on suspicion of driving under the influence in February and charged with DUI a day before the team hired him, according to a court record obtained by ESPN. Uh, this is La Russa's second DUI charge. He pleaded guilty to misdemeanor DUI in 2007 after he fell asleep at a traffic light in Florida. This arrest occurred in Arizona. So this comes out uh, that they knew about this, that the White Sox knew about this the day before they hired him, and they hired him anyway. Uh, since then, a couple, um, a couple things have come out. Uh, Jeff Passan also tweets that a high-ranking White Sox official told USA Today Sports that La Russa is in no danger of losing his job or any discipline by the club. Uh, we have some records from the uh, interaction with the officer coming out, saying La Russa saying, quote, do you see my ring? I'm a Hall of Famer baseball person. I'm legit. I'm a Hall of Famer, brother. Uh, apparently as a way to try and get out of the situation. So it poses three main questions in my eyes. The, the first question, is it incumbent upon the organization to do something, uh, to discipline, to make a public statement or whatever? What should the organization do? That's the first thing. The second thing is, how are the players going to react to, one, a new manager, uh, two, a new manager who has this kind of going on, and three, how will this affect uh, the free agents in the market? How will they perceive uh, this situation moving forward? Is it a destination still that players are excited to go to? Is it a little bit of a turnoff? How's that going to be perceived? But let's start with question number one. Is it incumbent upon the organization to do something? I guess that starts with what would make something incumbent upon the organization to do. You, you would expect there would be some sort of mandate that, you know, there's a certain moral code, I guess, that, uh, that you would follow to, to, to have to do something like that or your fan base would pressure you in such a way that maybe you would have to do something like that to make a public statement, to condemn an action, whatever. It all kind of starts from a place of morality and, or, or uh, public you know, pressure and, and perception. Um, the, this thing, this happened uh, well before the White Sox were hiring La Russa, were projected to hire him. Now, the arrest and the, the court records and all that different stuff um, was before they, they hired him, but they knew about it when they hired him. So now it calls into question, okay, if you're going to hire someone and you know this is going on, what message does that send to your players, to your fans, to the families that uh, you know support the team and stuff like that? Now. There's two ways to look at this, in my opinion. There's one, you know, the, one group of fans, one group of people will say, well, I don't want anyone with moral issues, with character issues playing for my team because only good people should play for the team and I will only root for good people. Now, the problem with that is you end up with that group of people deciding who is a good person and who is not. Now, a lot of times they'll say, well, he voted for this person, so he's not a good person, or he has this view, and so he's not a good person, or he did this thing, so he's not a good person. All this speculation coming from the outside, the perception of a player, of a manager, of a, uh, of a team operative, something like that, and a lot of it may, may or may not be true. A lot of it, a lot of times, is not true. Uh, I know it's happened to me a lot where things that I've said have been misconstrued. People have started a narrative and regardless of how often you show them the, the actual thing that I said and explain what the words in the tweet actually mean, they, it still has this narrative going on. Uh, and that has happened with uh, La Russa at times in the past as well. The other faction of fans will look at it and say, well, I don't care about his politics, his, uh, you know, the direction he thinks uh, this should go, his opinions on this or that. I don't care about anything, he, you know, the fact that he's divorced or not divorced or what he does with his family. I don't care about all that. All I care about is what happens on the fields. People may say that. So in, for those people, it's like, well, is La Russa the best guy to win a World Series because that's all they care about uh, for their White Sox team? So now you have two factions that are 
probably equally as large. I mean, generally speaking, there's a, a, a decent split down the middle. I would guess more fans tend towards, I just want to win uh, a world, I want my team to win a World Series, uh, and less fans tend towards, well, I don't want to root for who I consider to be bad people, but it's got to be fairly close. Uh, so you have your fan base that is split. So now is it incumbent upon the organization to do something about this event that happened before they hired La Russa? And I don't know the answer to that. I don't know the answer to that. I think that there's a strong message to be sent to your players by who you hire to lead them. And, and I think that's really where the big question comes in. Do you think as an organization that this issue is going to hamper the ability of your manager to lead your players in a direction where they will respect him, where they will follow him, where they will play for him, uh, where they'll give everything they have in practice and, and all that for him. Uh, because that's what you need as, out of a manager. The manager's job is to inspire that kind of commitment and that kind of dedication uh, and energy and, and um, uh, vigor, I guess, from his team. So that when he puts nine people on, out on the field to go play, they have a good chance of winning. Now, certainly the White Sox are a very talented team, but there's a lot of very talented teams. The teams who win are the teams who are very talented and also have a ton of buy-in and uh, play with energy and passion and who like, care deeply about winning and have grit. And like, There's a lot of other things that go into winning other than just talent. So can a manager inspire that in his players and will this detract from what you're able to do and how you're able to connect with those players. So if the organization thinks yes, then there needs to be some sort of action taken so that it's very clear, hey, these are our rules as an organization, this is what we stand for, these are our pillars, and we don't compromise, no one is above the law. If the answer is no, you don't think that that will inhibit how the players respond to the manager, then perhaps you know, the, the only other question is the public perception. Do you want to placate your fans? Do you want to come out and say this to satisfy one group when one group may not care about it and, and all of that? So it becomes a much different discussion. Uh, where do I fall on that? I don't know. I'm not, I'm not someone who is in that position or really has a right to opine about it. I will tell you in my organizations, the way I run it, the businesses that I run, uh, we have a very strong set of internal operating pillars. So when it comes time to make a tough decision, we have something to fall back on, the bedrock of our company, and we say, well, this, this pillar, this pillar, and this pillar, and these pillars, if we observe them, say that we need to make this decision. So regardless of how tough the decision is, we have this operating pillar, we have this operating procedure, and that's how we will go about making our decisions. I'm not saying every organization needs to be run that way. Certainly, the people who run big league organizations are much more experienced in the world of business and, uh, and organizational building than I am. I have a couple years under my belt so far of building an organization from the ground up. They have many, many, many years in business and in baseball. So I'm certainly not trying to tell Reinsdorf or anyone in the front office how to do their job. I'm simply bringing this to you and asking your opinion. What do you think should be done? Do you think the White Sox should do something to discipline uh, La Russa and make a statement that they, dis that they disapprove of these actions, even though these actions happened well before uh, they hired La Russa, do you think that they should just say, look, we feel like he's the best person to win a World Series and move on? Um, do you think that he deserves a, I guess, a second chance uh, that, you know, everyone makes mistakes and that as long as you uh, seemingly learn from them and try to become a better person and not make them again, that you should be given a second chance to operate? I'd be interested to hear what you guys think in the comments below. The second question that I alluded to a little bit in answering the first question is, how are the players going to perceive the manager when he comes in and there's all of this stuff going on around it? The current players that the White Sox have, and they have a lot of young players, they have a lot of uh, players from outside of this country, a lot of players that don't have a ton of experience in the big leagues, a lot of their players are not veterans. They, don't, they haven't been around for six years, 10 years, 15 years. Uh, and so because of that, they don't know anything different than what they've had there. They've had maybe one manager in their big league career. So they just know that managerial style. They don't potentially don't have a ton of strong opinions one way 
or the other, they're still, you know, it's, it's new for them playing for a new manager. So how are those players going to respond to this kind of firestorm coming through uh, right, right after they hire a new manager? And, and so I, I've been a part of, I've, I've had three big league managers now. Um, I've had multiple different organizations and so I have a, a general sense of kind of what goes on. I've heard a lot of stories from other people, talked to a lot of people about, is this guy good? Is that guy good? Whatever the case is. What I can tell you from being inside the industry is that every manager has something. There's something, whether it's a habit that you may or may not disagree with off the field. Maybe it's how he is as a family man that's really respectable or not respectable. Maybe it's the fact that, you know, I don't dip and a manager dips and I disagree with that uh, course of action or um, potentially it's something, a tick that you have that's, you know, in, in speech or it's, there, there's, everyone has something that annoys players. Maybe it's a managerial style, you know, when you set the lineup card and there's just no compromise. You won't even listen to a player about he doesn't need a day off, he wants to play today or something like that. There's always going to be certain things about a manager that sit well with people and certain things that don't sit well with people. And when you have 25, 26 players in a room and all the guys coming up from the minor leagues throughout the year and all of the coaches and all that, there's always going to be things. Now, potentially, Tony is fantastic with the club in the locker room, and I've never met Tony. I don't know his managerial style or anything like that, so I don't, I'm not in a position to, to give you definitive answers on this. I'm simply bringing it up that perhaps he is great in the locker room, and in that case, the players may love him, and they may go out there and play and perform at the best of their ability, and they may that may be a good decision. There's also a chance that these issues that come up right now with the with the DUIs and whatever other things that may or may not come out uh, that players now go into spring training when they're meeting their manager for the first time and, and trying to establish this culture and they're already in their head thinking oh well you've made this mistake this mistake this mistake I don't agree with this this and that and so I'm not gonna listen then you all of a sudden you start in spring training you're tuning out the manager already and that's not a good thing for any organization that's not a good thing for any leader that comes into any organization business baseball sport what doesn't matter to have the people that you're supposed to be leading already tuning you out so i'm simply bringing that that is a possibility of what could happen or it could go the other way and uh the players could very much respect how he handles it and the fact that he is human and makes mistakes but he's got their back in the clubhouse and they go out and it galvanizes them around this issue and they they go play better baseball uh, so that's a serious question. I think we won't know the answer to that until we see how this plays out. The third question is, will it affect free agents going to uh, the White Sox? Now, they had a very talented team. They certainly have all the talent that they need to win a lot of big league games and certainly to win in the postseason, but they did not win in the postseason this past year. Why is that? Well, there's a lot of reasons that that could be the case or could not be. Perhaps they just had two bad games and you know, it happens to every team. And if they played the exact same people next year in the exact same way, they'd win the World Series. We don't know that. We don't know that. Uh, perhaps it was they just weren't prepared uh, to handle the mental side of things. Perhaps they were. Like, they, we just, we don't know why they lost in the postseason. Certainly, though, the talent is there with the White Sox to win in the postseason because they beat a lot of good teams during the season and they have a lot of very good players. That being said, they still need to add to their team if you're not getting better and other teams in your division and other teams around the league are getting better, relatively speaking, you are getting worse. So how do you do that? Well, you bring up a lot of prospects, they've already done that, and then you go and you get some veteran pieces to plug the holes where your prospects aren't ready to perform yet. Uh, so they're looking on the free agent market, you look in trades. So how will it affect, how will the situation with La Russa affect how free agents look at it? Well, there's a couple things that I see there. One is the DUI incident, and we'll talk about that in a second. The second one is La Russa himself, having been out of the game for an extended period of time, out of the game in an official capacity where he wasn't managing, where he wasn't, you know, as a special assistant or a GM type of thing. He's been still involved with the game very much so, I'm sure, because it never really leaves you. When you, when you leave the game, it never really leaves you. But having not managed in a long time, how do players perceive his effectiveness to lead them forward in today's game. So let's talk a little bit about the first thing, the DUI. Do I think that will affect players signing there? Well, will it, will it affect me uh, having a manager that has um, some issues like that off the field? 
it might, it might not. Uh, generally speaking, I'm fairly forgiving until I meet someone in person and have them interact with me and judge their character for myself. I don't like going based on anybody else's judge of character. I like to actually meet someone and have a conversation. So I'm sure in my free agency, that process would be important to me that I can talk to the manager of whatever team that I'm going to sign with uh, and, and just get to know him and understand what his principles are and how he manages his style and stuff like that. Again, I want to be happy in, in wherever I choose to go. And that's a big part of it because you interface with the manager every single day, 162 games out of the season, plus, uh, you know, spring training is another six weeks plus postseason. Like you could be around this person for nine plus months, you know, nine and a half months throughout, uh, throughout the year. So it's a big thing. Um, do I think other players in the league will be turned off by this? I think there are a couple that maybe. I, I think Stroman has already kind of come out and said uh, that he is publicly on, on Twitter, and that's a whole other su subject for another video. Uh, but you're seeing some players say that, you know, voice their opinion that they're against it. And some players, you know, just don't voice their opinion at all and may not be for it necessarily, but it may not bother them. It may not be high on their priority list. That being said, as an organization, if any free agents are against it, then it really calls into question the effectiveness, again, of a manager being able to lead your team forward because now you have potentially a player that you would like to sign um, not being willing to sign with you. And so if you lose out on that one free agent, that could be the difference between winning a World Series or not, making the playoffs or not. And so you just don't ever want to, in bargaining, in, in signing and building a team, you don't ever want to eliminate people from the beginning that you don't have to eliminate. So that's one thing. The second issue is um, his, his being out of the game uh, for a certain amount of time. Look, the game is going in a direction that's a lot more personality, it's a lot more analytics, it's a lot more passion, it's a lot more branding and media and stuff like that. That's the direction the game is going. And Tim Anderson, who plays for the White Sox, has been one of the main people helping drive that forward. I mean, he's got the bat flips, he's got his, his merchandise, he's got you know, the, the videos that he makes, he's got, he does a very good job of branding himself, and he plays a very high caliber of baseball while doing so. So Tim is one of the examples of the future of an MLB star, someone who can take into account branding and media and uh, interaction with fans while still playing at an all-star level on the field. How is that going to fit with Tony La Russa, who hasn't been in the game in that capacity in, in a good bit of time and who the vast majority of his managerial career took place in a much different landscape of the game. Is he going to use analytics in a way that can help the people who are analytically minded, the players who are who think that way, move them forward? Is he going to be able to develop players in that realm? And is that even what the White Sox are trying to do? Do they want to go in that direction or not? Uh, I don't know. I'm not part of the White Sox and um, you know, perhaps I will be at some point later this offseason, perhaps I won't. But these are all questions that you have to start thinking about when it comes to attracting free agents. These are all questions that I'll be asking teams like, having La Russa come on raises these questions at least. These are things that are going to have to be answered when they're trying to attract free agents. So I'm curious to hear what you guys think of this whole situation of the DUI, of what the organization should or shouldn't do. If it's a good hire or a bad hire strategically, is La Russa the one to get the White Sox over the hump and win in the postseason, uh, take the Central Division and compete with the Indians and the Twins and, and win that division? Is he the one to do that or is this a step back and there's problems off the field and maybe doesn't know what what is going on analytically, and so we think that this is, uh, you know, this is not the right person to lead it forward. Has your opinion changed from the time he was hired to the time this UI stuff came out about his effectiveness being able to lead that team? I'm interested to hear what you guys think in the comments below, and I'm going to try to be on YouTube a lot more in coming days. I know I've taken quite a long break from uploading regularly, and I'm gonna try to stop that. It's been hectic. Uh, tomorrow is the Cy Young announcement and after that my uh, whole entire schedule settles down a little bit so i'm going to try to be here with you guys a lot more giving you my 
opinions on the landscape of baseball this offseason and my free agency and entertainment as always. So if you could do me a favor, hit that like button, hit that thumbs up, leave me a comment with your thoughts down below, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and I will see you guys in the next video very shortly.